my name is Missy and I'm here with Jacqueline Kreider of PB&J Mortgage. And we just wanted to come together today and bring you guys some information because I know that I am asked quite a bit. I'm sure Jacqueline is asked all the time, how much money do I need to buy a house? And we can't give you just one solid figure. It's going to vary, but we're going to go through the five things that make up that total that you'll need to buy a house. So the number one thing people ask all the time, how much, how much do I need to put for down payment? You guys have all heard probably that you need 20% down. Maybe some of you have not heard that. I actually hope that that's the case. You don't have to put 20% down. Um, there is programs that will let you do as little as like three, three and a half percent. If you happen to be a veteran or you happen to want to purchase in a more rural area um, that falls in within some USDA guidelines, there's a possibility that you will have zero percent. Mm -hmm. Yes, I said zero percent wow. down. Um, there's even potentially some programs for like down payment assistance um, that may be an option. Um, but I would say safely between three and five percent is pretty much the minimum required down for most products. So um, when people are saying, oh, well, you know, how much do you need down? Three to five percent is probably a pretty good figure in your head um, of how much money you need to put down. Like I said, unless you happen to be a veteran, which if you are, thank you so much for your service or active mm -hmm. duty. Um, or like I said, you want to be kind of like in a rural area. But well, three to five percent is pretty. That's great news. Standard. Yeah. Because it's a lot less than 20. So if you've been saving, like saving money and saving money and telling yourself, man, I need 20%. Yeah. Guess what? You don't need 20%. Three to five will do you just fine. Okay, number two, when it comes to how much money that you need to have saved up to buy a house, is going to be called option money. Let me give you a little bit of information on this. Now, I'm talking about Texas-specific contracts. Very, so, yeah, very true. Yeah, not, not the same from state to state. That's going to vary. But an option period is negotiated into your sales contract between you and the seller. The option, what it does is you're giving a amount of money to the seller for them to take their house off the market for a period of days. Right. During those days, you are basically buying the option, where the term comes in, to have the house inspected and do all your due diligence to decide whether you wanted to continue with that sales contract or not. So you can literally back out for any reason in that yeah. period of time. Now what we're seeing in today's market Roughly $250 or more, depending on the sales price. And that's buying you anywhere from seven to 14 days of time to do all that due diligence and be able to decide whether you're going to continue with the sales transaction or whether you're going to terminate that contract. Now, one more thing on option. If you continue with the sales contract, your option money that you paid to the seller will be credited back to you yep. at the closing table. It will. If you decide that there are too many repairs or your due diligence just doesn't seem like that's what you want to take on and you decide to terminate, then that money is uh, the seller's. So that would stay with the seller. So that is your, uh, your amount that you're willing to walk away from depending on the condition. So roughly $250, it can go up, like I said, just a little bit, but that should be a good amount of money in this market. Yep. I was going to say, that's where hiring the true professional comes in because they're going to know exactly what's happening in the market to make sure they can advise you correctly on option, right? Absolutely. Okay, we're still talking about how much money you need to buy a house and we are at number three. Number three, also Texas specific, is yep. going to be called earnest money. Earnest money, what a it, funny word. It is a funny word, but if you think about it, it is saying that you are truly earnest in purchasing that seller's home. And the way that you show that you're earnest is by money. So in this market, we're seeing 1% is pretty standard that can, of the sales price. And that goes up depending on how strong you would like to make your offer. More is always better. Now, that amount of money is given to the title company. And they will hold that in an escrow account until closing. At closing, it is a credit against the total amount owed. So for example, if you're buying a $350,000 house, roughly $3,500 would be that 1% calculation for earnest money. Now, if you decide that during your option that we talked about in number two, that you decide to terminate that contract, then earnest money 
can be released from you and the seller back to you so that you have it. You can go shopping again and put down earnest money on house number two. So make sure you calculate 1% of your sales price that you're going to be offering and that will go into an escrow account held by title. It's important to note that when you get to the end of the transaction, that 1% that you paid typically, mm -hmm. is gonna actually get credited towards down payment and closing cost. So it's not like the 1% is going poof in the air and you're not seeing it again. You actually will get that money credited towards all of those things at the very end of the transaction. Oh, I thought I was getting a bonus. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't get the money. It goes, it goes back to that transaction. So. A lot of people are worried like, oh my gosh, well, I paid all this money. Okay, right. those things, option and earnest, like she discussed, they actually will get credited back at the end of the process, providing that you go to the closing table when you close. Good point. Yep. So number four, right? So appraisal. You may or may not know what an appraisal is, right? It sounds kind of like a funny word too. So an appraisal, what this is, is it's going to be a report that is done on that house that you're looking to buy to make sure it's actually worth the money that you're trying to pay for it. Mm -hmm. So using Missy's example, $350,000 house, we're gonna send somebody out, a professional, called an appraiser. They're going to do this report. They're going to pull other houses that have sold in the area, and they're going to determine what the amount that house is worth is. That is what an appraisal is. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you do pay out of pocket up front. So when you go and order the appraisal, you pay this amount. Typically, it's somewhere between about $500 and $750, roughly. Um, sometimes if you're buying a very expensive house, it could be a little bit more. Um, but I would say pretty standard is about $500 to $750. And that actually is pretty par for the course across the whole United States, roughly. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what that is. That amount, like I said, it does get paid to the appraiser. Now, let's say, for instance, that when the appraisal comes back, you happen to still be within your option period or the house comes in a little bit low and you decide you don't want to buy anymore. That amount of money is not refunded to you. If the appraiser has done their job and submitted the appraisal report back, that would end up being money that you wouldn't get. If you do go all the way to the end of the transaction, mm -hmm. which hopefully that's exactly where we head, you will get that credited back towards your closing costs, down payment, all of those kinds of things. Good to know. Yep. So number five, right? As far as costs go, closing costs. Man, I get asked this question all the time. <laughs> How much are my closing costs gonna be? What do they entail? All these kind of things. So I give a pretty good estimate of one to 3%. And you're saying, well, that's a pretty big range. Why one to 3%? The reason one to 3% of the overall purchase price is because of the fact that there's a lot of factors that go into this. For instance, the third party fees, th things like that we can't control as a mortgage company. The title fees, whatever title fees are or whatever title fees are. The title is picked on the actual contract itself. When that is picked, whatever title tells us these fees are, we have to then transpose those onto the closing costs, you know, the closing disclosure and things like this. Um, in Texas specifically, our title policies run typically about 1% of mm -hmm. the purchase price. And so if the seller pays that, which is typically customary in Texas, however, as you know, market not changes. in this market <laughs> necessarily. And so that can change that figure by 1%. And that's why I give kind of that range, one to three. The other things that are typically included, that appraisal that we talked about before, um, you know, there's going to be any kind of lender fees. Um, so some lenders have some fees, some lenders don't. Um, escrow amounts, um, all of those things are usually included in that kind of one to 3%. But if you want a good rough figure, one to 3%. Now something that's not included, but I'll let Missy speak mm -hmm. to is inspection. So inspection is something that's really important to the process. I'll let Missy speak to that, but it is not included in the closing cost amount. So you want to speak yes. a little bit to like what that typically runs Absolutely. and why it's important. So if you recall, we talked about option period. This is when you're going to be able to hire that licensed inspector. They're going to have their set prices. You can shop that around. Uh, we're seeing anywhere from $350 on the low side up to $1,000 or more. And that's going to depend on your square footage as well as your amenities. If there's a pool in the backyard, you certainly want to have that inspected yeah. as well. And so that would go to the higher end of that range. Now, the inspector is similar to the appraiser. 
you're paying for a service that is being complete. And so that's not going to be part of your closing cost, the inspection, but you're going to pay them directly, but it is a cost of your overall transaction and purchase. Yeah. It's just important to note like that the, there's some of them that once they're completed, they're non-refundable, right. like the inspection and the uh, appraisal, right? Whereas there's a lot of other ones like uh, earnest be. money that potentially could be depending on the time frame. And that's where it's really important to hire the professionals, guys, because right. the time frame is going to be what really determines whether or not you get them refunded or you don't get them refunded. Absolutely. Okay. So that kind of should give you a good breakout of, you know, down payment, mm -hmm. um, appraisal, option money, earnest money, closing costs, and some of these pieces so you can kind of get your financials a little bit in order. Um, if you have specific questions, please feel free to give either one of us a call. We're happy to answer the questions that we can answer Absolutely. or, of course, submit you to the other side to answer <laughs> the questions that we maybe are not the professional on. Absolutely. It's a, definitely a team effort, uh, and that's how this whole transaction should feel your mortgage person that you get to know, like, and trust, your real estate agent that has your back to make sure that you're purchasing the right house at the right price under the right terms. All of that is so critical in making sure that this money that we're talking about is well spent and well invested. Absolutely. So, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us as we educate you on the cost of purchasing a house. It is a financial investment that we are sure will pay off in dividends for you and your family. Again, my name is Missy. This is Jacqueline, and we look forward to seeing you and helping you soon. Absolutely. Have a great one.